Welcome to A Diary of a Sheep Dairy Farmer, where we talk all things dairy sheep, from breeding to lambing to milking and everything in between and outside. I'm your host, Becca, owner, operator, and glorified farmhand of Hidden Hollow Sheep Dairy. Welcome back, guys, to another day of dairy sheep. Last week, no, sorry, two weeks ago, I talked about weaning and touched a little bit about drying off ewes and the mistake I made in 2021 when I sent all my ewes out to pasture in a panic without their lambs after I found the bald eagles had killed 123 of my lambs. I did not dry off my ewes and they went right onto lush spring grass. Can you say mastitis? Lesson learned. There are several ways to dry off ewes. When this topic comes up on dairy sheep sites, people will give a whole slew of answers. I have seen people say everything from withholding food for 24 hours and water for 12 hours. I do not recommend this, and honestly, I don't even know where this comes from. There are times where you are going to withhold feed from your sheep for various reasons. Um, Shearing is one that comes to mind, but weaning should never be one of them, in my opinion. And why would you ever withhold water? I'm curious if anyone has tried this method and what your results were. Any complications? I can. I have heard it cuts down drastically on your drying off. I just feel it cannot be good for your sheep. Um, people have said to get rid of everything that you're feeding them and only feed dry hay and straw. I don't actually feed my sheep straw. Um, I do know that my sheep will pick at it when I use straw for bedding but I've never actually used it for feed. Now, that being said, I know when we had dairy, or when we had cattle um, half a lifetime ago, we used to feed pea straw to them in the winter, and it helped heat up their core and keep them warm when the temperatures dipped below freezing or like into the negatives but I've never needed to do that with the sheep since they do have natural insulation. And we're pretty good at what we feed during the winter with just the hay. But yeah, feed reduction is in way of removal of your high protein and calorie diet that the ewes are on when they're growing their lambs and producing milk is more common. Drying off typically takes between 5 and 10 days. It can take as long as 14 days, depending on what your feeding regimen was before you started weaning and how soon you start that drying off period. If you're only feeding hay, whether it is grass, um, a grass alfalfa mixture or straight alfalfa, drying off may not take as long. On our farm, we feed a high quality alfalfa to our ewes, along with a corn silage and or barley, depending on if they are only raising lambs or if they are getting milked. So let's start with the ewes that are just raising lambs. They will be on an alfalfa diet only. Our hay is tested yearly, so we know which cutting is best for our sheep during which season they're in be it breeding, which gestation period, uh, lambing and post lambing, milking, we know which hay we can feed to which group. And then when we start the drying off, usually the week of weaning, the ewes will be switched to the lesser quality hay so that by the time weaning happens, we can send those ewes right to pasture without any worry over other issues. For the ewes that I'm milking, once I see that they're starting to wean their lambs naturally and their milk supply is slipping, I will cut back on their feed. They will no longer get the silage and or barley and they will be switched over to a lesser quality hay as well. And by the time the ewes have weaned off their lambs, they pretty much have dried up due to my milking them out each day and the drop in the quality feed so they are ready for pasture as soon as I pull the lambs. Another way, 
and this is what we did for our February March group of views is to let them graze down a lot and then keep them on their lo on that lot for about an extra week or 10 days ish. People that don't know any better like to comment that I'm teaching my sheep to eat dirt. And while it may look that way, it's not a dry lot, as in a dirt patch with no vegetation at all. There is still some pasture, a little bit of grass growing, but not the lush foot tall grass that they started out with. Think more of fall pasture. Not the best, but not bare dirt either. Kind of yellow, little stemmy, probably more weed than grass, but there's still enough there to fill them up, just not enough for to help them produce the milk at the rate that they had been. So then they have to decide, maintain their body weight or maintain their milk. And at that point where the lambs are at weanable and the moms are already wanting to wean them by about three to four months, then they will start kicking those lambs off because self-preservation kicks in and they will stop producing the milk and start storing that feed for themselves. Does that make sense? So then the ewes will naturally start weaning the lambs. And then when you pull the lambs, the ewes can go on to better pasture without having any issues. So these methods have worked really well for us over the last couple years without any issue because if you don't dry off your ewes properly, you will have problems. Maybe you'll get lucky a time or two, but eventually it will catch up with you and you will pay the price like we did. Like I mentioned, in 2021, we pulled all our remaining lambs from our ewes and sent them back to pasture, just trying to salvage anything from that lamb crop. I think I mentioned that after all was said and done, after the eagle issues, the bloat from the feed, the deaths from weaning too early, I ended up with 26 ewe lambs from my entire 2021 lamb crop. And I had a double whammy because that fall, when I brought the ewes into breed, I ended up with several that I had to sell due to mastitis or other utter issues because I did not dry off my ewes properly. Some of my best ewes, my gallon a day milkers who had the biggest bags and the best personalities I had to sell due to issues. And because my luck is crap, they're the ones whose ewe lambs died. So now I am out that whole milk line unless I had a sister or an older daughter. And again, because my luck is crap, most of them I did not. It was a tough blow. Enough so that my husband and I looked to pack up and leave. We planned to sell the farm and all but 50 head of sheep and moved to a smaller acreage, acreage about 50, 55 acres. We had a buyer for the farm and we were on our way to put an offer down on a place when we got a call from that town's planning and zoning that basically told us the place we wanted to buy was in a flood zone, which we knew. And they would, appro they would approve all our building plans. And we had been going back and forth with them for a couple of months. And they finally had kind of approved what we wanted to do, but said, no, now if you want to do this, that's fine. But you have to build it up eight feet. We did all the math. We ran all the numbers and we decided not to put in an offer. We apologized to the very sweet couple selling the bare ground and changed just about everything on how we dealt with weaning, drying off, and housing the lambs. In the end, it all worked out. It made us a little more efficient, not that you can tell, because we are both fly by the seat of our pants type people and planning is not in our wheelhouse. I know it pisses off a lot of my YouTube followers. Sorry, not sorry. And because of all that happened, it basically got my husband where he is today, a county commissioner or will be come November and where I am today. So I left my job in November of 2021, knowing that I needed to be on the farm to deal with issues as they happened, not just on weekends or after work when I was coming into things, only knowing half the story. All in all, it has worked out for both of us and we are so much happier in our life now. 
we have a better drying off and weaning system in place, as well as a health check system for the ewes in the fall before breeding. So to recap, extreme restriction of food, not recommended. A slow switch from high quality feed to low quality feed to dry off ewes, yes. How do you guys dry off your ewes? What methods do you use? Let me know in the comments. As always, I appreciate you being here and thank you for your support. I would be ever so grateful if you would leave a review or share this podcast with your dairy sheep loving friends. Anything to get the word out. As always, you can follow me on Instagram at Diary of a Sheep Dairy Farmer. And if you want to follow the chaos around the farm, you can find me on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok at Hidden Hollow Sheep Dairy. If there are any topics you are interested in, or if you are interested in being a guest on the podcast, please let me know. You can reach out to me at hiddenhollowidaho at gmail.com. Thanks for being here, guys. I'll talk to you again next week.